some fun things with uh, with this uh, that I, I think most phones will have microphone, so um, it, it should work um, definitely for most people's smartphones uh, for the sound portion of it. So it's available for iOS and Android. Uh, I'm just gonna run it. So uh, this is what the screen looks like. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it. Uh, anyways, that's <laughs> you can download it. Um, now this has a, a, an interface for remote access. That's the main thing I want you to do. So uh, so it has a few things that. Um, uh, uh, they can do acoustic. So there are a few things under acoustics. I don't know how well you can see it, um, but well, yeah, okay, it's getting blurry. Well, there are a few things under acoustics. So uh, let me just uh, do uh, start with the one that uh, kind of um, um, sh shows. Um, it's called the audio scope, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to allow remote access. And when I allow remote access, there's a URL that I can point my web browser to and get um, something to display on a web browser. So 192, 168, 1113, that's IP address of my uh, phone within my local area network. And that's basically what's on my phone, except in a way that's much more easily shared. Uh, let me zoom this way. Yeah, I, I think it's zooming that way it will reasonably work so and, and i'll just control it from here i can control it from here but i can also control it from uh, my phone so i'll do it that way so so this is a uh, um, something that shows that can show the waveform of a sound wave that my phone microphone is detecting so when i start running it and just uh, talk for a bit then it does that wow those axis scale changing is so annoying uh, oh wait 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 Oh, okay, that's a lot better. Um, well, maybe not too much better. Um, uh, I, I think I liked it better when I zoomed in this way. Um, yeah, so there's that. And uh, so the duration is how long of a time it's capturing. So right now it's catching 10 millisecond or hundredth of a second. I can capture a tenth of a second. And what you choose to capture will, so, you know, it'll show different parts. Like as I'm speaking, the volume level of my sound um, changes quite a bit over a tenth of a second. And that's what you are seeing in this scope. So when I capture just a 10 millisecond of that, then uh, what you see there has more to do with the frequency of the sound that I'm creating. So, uh, so you know, when I'm speaking normally, it looks quite random. Um, so I can try to il uh, display a more a consistent looking sound, I can whistle like, By the way, I don't know how well this, uh, so let me just, I'm gonna pause it while I'm whistling. Yeah, sorry, my mouth is dry. Okay, so um, I guess I was whistling at something like maybe uh, somewhere between 500 and a kilohertz, and you can actually measure the frequency of that whistling here. So it's uh, showing the time in milliseconds, so I have, um, so let's say start from here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so 10 cycles in, um, uh, let me do this on a calculator. So uh, I have the amount of time was 7.646. 7.646 milliseconds minus where I started the counting, uh, 0 0.167, 0 0.167. So 7.479 millisecond. Uh, that was the period. So for frequency, you take the reciprocal of that. So let me do multiply by, I don't know. Um, so 0 0.001. So that's the period in seconds. And let me take store it into memory and do one divided by memory recall. So it was really only a frequency of 100. And... It felt like it was higher, but okay. So the sound I was making, well, it says it's about 134 hertz.
So, so that's one thing you can do. And um, you can also see other features of sound waves. So, you know, when people whistle, it's usually very annoying. And <laughs> there's a reason for that. It, you know, so when you whistle, it's uh, producing something that's a pretty clean, pure sinusoidal wave. Those are, um, for most people, they find it annoying. <laughs> I find it annoying. <laughs> and uh, most other more pleasant sounds are not pure sinusoidal wave like that. Like, um, so when someone is uh, singing, uh, those will have a very distinct pattern. So uh, let me just, I'm just gonna uh, sing a distinct note, like, do, um, let's see, I might need a longer duration so that you can see the pattern better. 40 milliseconds, uh, maybe, okay. Um, uh, maybe that'll work. So let me give this a try. Do, and you see, um, I'm gonna pause it while I'm singing do. Do, you see this uh, pattern here? It's a, a regular-ish looking pattern, but it's not like uh, when I was whistling, it's where it's just pure sinusoidal. This is a result of superposition of different harmonics and most uh, vocal sounds. <laughs> there are higher harmonics that shows up in an effect like this. Uh, let me just try a couple more notes and I'll move on to illustrating something else. Um, so that was do. Let me try the next note. Re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So, um, and oh, I guess a uh, higher. All right, <laughs> I haven't actually tried this before, so it, the what I see with the the last note were a little surprising. So this is all great for just looking at the audio waveform in a I don't know intuitive way, but if you want to be more quantitative, like uh, figure out the different frequencies that are in your audio, it can be um, limiting. Um, so there are other things you can do with the waveforms like audio waves that helps uh, highlight different features. So um, so within this app, there's uh, something you can do. It'll fail out in a bit, I think, because yeah. I'm moving on to something different. There's one called uh, audio spectrum. Um, so let's see how well this works. I'm going to enable remote access to this. And let me just, uh, uh, I think I can just reload, yeah. Okay, so this is the audio spectrum and let me just start running. And I guess I'm just speaking normally. Um, do I want, I think I want more samples. So let me just change the setting to get more samples. Um, so I, I guess a Fourier transform is a little bit beyond the level of this class, so <laughs> I won't talk about it too much. Um, other than that, this can be used to, so there's a way it's figure, trying to fi figure out the musical note. Um, it, so this is the, let me just pause it for a bit. So this is the representation of the sound wave in the frequency space. The x-axis here is the frequency. The y-axis is just the amplitude. So it's uh, showing you, um, components of the wave at different frequencies. So 87.89 Hertz is the largest uh, uh, frequency. That's why it's saying peak frequency is that. And it's trying to relate that to a musical note. So um, uh, let me try whistling while this runs. Uh, so something like, so let's see here. I paused it while I was whistling. So this peak frequency is where my whistle was. Yeah, that sounded like a, a kilohertz to me. Um, oh, you know what? I remember what I did wrong. Um, before when I was doing this calculation, um, <laughs> when I counted this, that wasn't the period. That was the period times 10 because I counted the 10 cycles. So I should have divided by 10 first. Wait, not that. 
Um, okay, so in that, okay, that, um, so, okay, that number, or that divided by another 10. Um, so that's the actual period. So uh, when I do one divide by that, that should give me something like, okay, yeah, 1.3 kilohertz, that makes total sense, yeah. So um, <laughs> I guess one nice thing about this uh, uh, audio spectrum thing is it, um, you know, <laughs> you don't have to do the calculation that I was doing and doing uh, making mistakes. You can just see it. So um, so this is the about one kilohertz sound. And you can also uh, go to lower frequency. Let me give that a try. I paused it while I was whistling. I think, uh, yeah, that's about as low as my whistle can get. And it can get higher. Um, and so it, the high end is about two kilohertz. That sounds right. I, can, I think I can whistle through maybe one or two octaves and that's about my limit. So anyways, um, so there's this, um, um, uh, audio spectrum. Uh, this is the kind of thing audio engineers actually use when they want to analyze at what frequency is the feedback most likely to happen. Then you can get a kind of a spectrum of uh, uh, echo of the room or whatever. So yeah, <laughs> one of the things you can do on this app. Um, let me say there's something called um, audio uh, frequency history, um, uh, but I don't think it, that's what I think it is. Yeah, I, I don't think it is. Um, all right, um, so let me just go back. There is one called uh, Doppler, uh, uh, Do Doppler effect. I don't know what it is. So, um, well, let me just uh, enable remote access and just... Uh, show you what it is I'm saying. Um, okay, um, so base frequency that. Uh, oh, I think for this, you might need two of these, one to generate the sound and the other one to move. Um, yeah, let me give it a try. So I'm running it and under results. Oh, wait, am I, I'm on the wrong screen here, under result. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not, so it's here. Oh, I think this might be designed to only detect the frequencies around here so that it's not confused by much larger frequency. So I, I think I can do this. Um, so. I have a way of generating uh, a QR tone, um, not from my phone, because I want to move my phone relative to the sound source. Um, there's an app called Audacity. It's a free app. Um, you can Google search it and download it. If you want to do a lot of audio processing, this is a great tool. And one of the things you can do, you can generate a tone. So let me generate a sine tone of one kilohertz. Uh, let me make it a super long duration so that I have enough length without looping. So there it is. There's my pure sine tone. <laughs> I can zoom in to show you that it looks like sinusoidal wave. Um, and uh, let me just run it. It'll be a bit of an annoying sound for a bit. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, um, I forgot to change my share setting. Uh, okay, I don't know how well the computer, the, the resolution of the screen came through. Uh, last time I did this by mistake, it looked decent, so I think it's still fine. Um, so I disabled the sharing of sound, so when I play this, what you hear will just be coming through my own uh, microphone. So it should hopefully be uh, quieter than before. So let me play it again. And while I'm, okay, let me do it this way. I need the two screens at the same time. I need the access to this screen and I need the access to this screen. So, um, so okay, I think uh, 
So this is running and this is running. Oh yeah. So with a pure tone, you can, except when I'm speaking, uh, it's detecting it pretty well. Let me make this a little bit quieter so that, and maybe that's too quiet. Okay, so this is what I want to try. I want to try moving my phone. Yeah, okay, it doesn't work well here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is probably one of those things where it's better done with uh, two phones and longer distance to work with than me just moving this back and forth. So, all right, that didn't work so well. Um, so anyways, but so I just wanted to demonstrate this since we are on the waves and sound waves and there are some fun things you can do with it. Uh, there are, uh, I think uh, um, the two, uh, most uh, intuitive and um, things that still let you visualize different things are um, this audio scope that you saw me use before. It's uh, good enough for visualizing the audio waveforms, and um, and yeah, it's um, and you can also. And the other one was uh, the the audio spectrum, uh, which will show. Um, uh, which will show you the frequency spectrum of the sound waves it's hearing. So in normal speaking voice, it has a few different, yeah, anyways. Okay, so...